Hi, welcome back to Joe Blogs. In today's episode, I want to provide you with an update on the Russian economy. If you've been following the channel, you'll be aware that the sanctions that have been applied against Russia as a direct result of its invasion of Ukraine have started to have a serious impact on the financial performance of Russia. And the latest data that's been released by the Bank of Russia for the period ending July 2023 reveals that Russia's current account surplus for the first seven months of the year has fallen by over $140 billion or around 85%. And this represents a serious problem for Russia because in 2022, the economy posted a deficit of over $48 billion. And the official deficit posted in the first six months of 2023 is over $15 billion. And the reason that these figures are causing problems for Russia is that it's having to fund all of these losses from its National Wealth Fund. And as the National Wealth Fund dwindles, there is a serious risk that Russia could run out of cash at some point over the next 6 to 12 months. So in today's video, I'll have a detailed look at the latest figures that have been published by the Bank of Russia. We'll go through the details on what's happening with the current account and the trade balance. We'll then have a look at what's going on with regards to Russia's oil and gas revenues, its other revenues, how much Russia is currently spending on the war in Ukraine, what the bottom line of all of this is for the Russian economy, what's going on with the reserves and the National Wealth Fund. And then finally today, I'll wrap up with my summary. So what I think is likely to happen in the Russian economy over the course of the next three to six months. As I'm sure you'll be aware, the official data being published by Russia is highly limited at the moment. However, the Bank of Russia, which is Russia's central bank, recently posted this press release, giving us a full update on the balance of payments to the end of July 2023. And the introduction to this press release states, according to the Bank of Russia's preliminary estimate, the current account surplus of the balance of payments of the Russian Federation in the period January to July 2023 amounted to 25.2 billion US dollars, which is significantly lower than in the corresponding period of 2022. The decisive role in the dynamics of the indicator was played by a decrease in the surplus of trade balance by 68.4%. So obviously this is quite a negative introduction and this is the official press release from the Bank of Russia which has been authorised by the Russian authorities. This isn't me coming up with sensational language to try to dramatise what's happening in Russia. This is the official press release. So let's have a detailed look at the figures that have been published. The current account for a country is basically similar to your checking account. It shows the balance of income that the country is posting as a result of the value of all of its exports, so all of the money that it's earning from the sale of its products, the cost of all of its imports, which is basically all of the money that the country is paying out to import things, and also takes into account the levels of investment. So this is overseas investment into your country, so where other companies are investing money, or other countries are coming in and wanting to put money into your economy, and vice versa, where companies from your country are investing overseas, or your government has decided to make investments into to other countries. And of course, in terms of the levels of investment, Russia is currently suffering from a lack of overseas investment. Since the start of the Ukraine war, there has been a mass exodus in terms of overseas companies. Lots of companies have closed their facilities and decided that they no longer want to put any more money into the Russian economy. And on the flip side of that, there is no external investment being made by Russia currently into any of the countries that are applying sanctions against it. And so we are seeing a complete lack of inward capital investment into the Russian economy. And the falls in the level of investment are having a negative impact on the current account for Russia. All of the figures quoted in this press release by the Bank of Russia are shown in billions of US dollars. So if we start off by looking at the current account for the period between January and July 2023, you can see that the figure posted by Russia for that seven month period was a positive figure of 25.2 billion US dollars which in isolation sounds like quite a big figure. However, if you compare that number to the column at the end of this table, which shows the results for the seven months to July 2022, you can see that in the first seven months of the last financial year, Russia posted a positive figure of 165.4 billion US dollars. So the current figures represent a fall of over 140 billion US dollars or around 85% year on year. 
And I think a fall of this magnitude, 85%, can certainly be defined as a crash. And if we look at the description provided by the Bank of Russia for these results, it states a decline in the surplus of trade balance between January and July 2023 was caused by the drop in the value of exports as a result of a decrease in physical volume of exports and a decrease in world prices for the main goods of Russian export compared to the same period of the previous year. So what that's basically saying is that in the first seven months of 2023, there's been a significant fall in the volume of Russia's oil and gas exports. But in addition to that, there's also been a fall in global prices for those products, which is having a double whammy impact on Russia's revenues. And if you've been following the channel, you'll be aware that the Chinese economy, which is the second largest in the world, is currently in a state of crisis. There's been a major slowdown in the economy. The recent results published for July show that exports and imports are down significantly and that China has actually moved into a period of deflation. We've got falling prices coming out of China. And China's economic slowdown is likely to have a serious impact onto the global economy. So it's likely that over the next three to six months, we will see a further slowdown globally. And that could mean that the price of oil and gas falls further and will therefore have a further detrimental impact onto Russia's revenues. But I think another thing that's interesting to look at here is the trend as to what's happening with Russia's current account. If we look at the figures for the first quarter of 2023, you can see that Russia posted a current account surplus of 14.8 billion US dollars, which means that Russia was posting an average of around 4.9 billion US dollars per month in the first quarter. If we now look at the figures for the second quarter, you can see that the total current account surplus was 8.6 billion, which represents a monthly average of around 2.9 billion US dollars, which is a fall of around $2 billion per month in the second quarter versus the first quarter. If we now look at the figure for July 2023, you can see that Russia posted a surplus of $1.8 billion, which represents a fall of over $1 billion compared to the monthly average for quarter two, and over $3 billion for the monthly average of quarter one. So this basically tells us that the trend is negative. The current account surplus is getting smaller month by month, and there is a possibility that over the course of the next three to six months, if the current trends continue, that Russia could actually actually get to a situation where it's posting a current account deficit, which would obviously be disastrous for the Russian economy because it's entirely dependent on making large amounts of revenue from the sale of oil and gas. Now, before we go on any further today, I want to talk to you about today's sponsor, Masterworks. Shortly after Russia's invasion of Ukraine, I stumbled across a story about a Russian oligarch, Alasha Usmanov, whose mega yacht Dilbar had been seized by the German authorities and the yacht was carrying an art collection worth more than $5 million. Now, up until that point, it had always puzzled me why rich people would put art on yachts rather than keeping it in their homes. However, after the seizure of these assets, I realised that Russian oligarchs were essentially free to sail the world in their mega yachts, carrying a fortune of assets with them. So even in a worst case scenario, if they lost all of their other assets, they would be able to sell the art and live comfortably for the rest of their days. Now, obviously, most of us won't be retiring to the seas anytime soon, but today's sponsor, Masterworks, does allow you to invest like an oligarch without any of the legal drama. Masterworks have given access to over $750 million worth of art to more than 790,000 investors, and so far they've generated over 45 million in art sales. And the net annual returns that Masterworks have delivered over the course of the last three years include individual sale returns of 10%, 35% and 77%. Now, I want to make it absolutely clear that past performance is not indicative of future results and that I am not providing investment advice and you need to do your own research if you're interested in investing with Masterworks. Now, I haven't invested or started my portfolio yet. However, the good news if you are interested in investing is that Joe Bloggs subscribers can skip the waitlist and get priority access for Masterworks by clicking the link in the description below. The trade balance figures provided by the Bank of Russia just looks at the difference between the value of exports and the cost of imports. So this strips out all investment. And as you can see, for the first seven months of 2023, Russia posted a surplus of 64.4 billion US dollars which compares to the previous year's figure of 204 billion. 
and represents a reduction of around $140 billion, which is more than 68% or more than two thirds. So once again, this can definitely be described as a crash. And if we look at the trend as to what's happening, in the first quarter of 2023, Russia posted a positive trade balance of $30.2 billion, which represents an average of $10.1 billion per month. In the second quarter, the total was $26.8 billion, which is an average of $8.9 billion per month, so $1.2 billion per month lower than in the first quarter. And in the month of July, the total figure was $7.3 billion, which represents a fall of $1.6 billion against the average for quarter two, and $2.8 billion against the average for quarter one. So once again here, we're seeing a marked month-on-month -month trend for the trade balance reducing. And if this continues, it's going to put serious pressure on both the Russian economy and its reserves. Now, interestingly, the figures provided by the Bank of Russia for the balance of services, so the difference between the value that Russia is receiving for all of the services that it's providing to other countries and the cost of all of the services that Russia is paying for is showing a negative figure. In the seven months between January and July 2023, Russia posted a deficit on its balance of services of 20.4 billion US dollars. And this compares to a deficit of 8.9 billion for the same period in 2022, which represents an increase in a deficit of $11.5 billion. And once again, if we look at the trend as to what's happening, in the first quarter of 2023, the total deficit was $7.6 billion, which represents an average of around $2.5 billion per month. In the second quarter, the total was $8.8 .8 billion, which represents an average of $2.9 billion per month. And in July, the deficit posted was $4 billion. So that's $1.1 billion higher than the average for the second quarter and $1.5 billion higher than the average for the first quarter. So once again here, we're seeing a negative trend from Russia's point of view. The deficit on the balance of services is increasing month on month. So this represents a cash outflow for Russia, and once again, will put further pressure on the Russian economy and its reserves. And finally, if we have a look at the figures for the balance on primary and secondary income, and these figures represent investment income. So income that Russia is receiving from all of its overseas investments and vice versa, money that is leaving Russia being paid to overseas investors. And once again, you can see here that all of the figures quoted are negative. So Russia is paying out more to overseas investors than it's receiving from its overseas investments. And that really reflects what's been going on in Russia over the course of the last 20 to 30 years. Russia has been receiving net investment. A lot of companies invested money and a lot of countries have helped Russia develop its economy. But if we look at the latest data, you can see that for the seven months end of July 2023, the official net deficit was 18.8 billion US dollars which compares to a deficit of 29.7 billion for the first seven months of 2022. So that represents a reduction in the deficit of $10.9 billion. And that makes sense because a lot of companies have walked away from their investments in Russia, so they're no longer receiving any dividend income. So less money is now leaving Russia because Russia has nationalized a lot of assets. It's bought assets for a token sum of $1 or one ruble, basically to take over control of those assets. So there's been a reduction in the amount of money leaving Russia being paid to all of these overseas investors because basically they no longer have any interest in Russia. However, the reason that these figures are still showing a deficit is that there are a lot of countries that are still investing in Russia, countries such as China, countries from the Middle East, and those countries are still receiving a return on those investments. And that's why we're still seeing a deficit. And this, once again, will continue to put further pressure onto the Russian economy. Russian oil and gas revenue in June 23 was 3.4 billion rubles, which was significantly lower than the 6.4 billion rubles earned in June 2022 and represented a fall of around 47% for the month. However, if we look at the cumulative situation for the first six months of 2023, the total revenue earned by Russia from oil and gas sales was 11.5 billion rubles, which compared to 22.4 billion for 2022 and represented a reduction of over 48%. Now, as we've discussed before on the channel, 
Oil and gas revenues are the lifeblood of the Russian economy. This is basically what Russia has built its wealth upon. Prior to Russia's invasion of Ukraine, Russia was one of the largest exporters of oil and gas globally, and its biggest single market prior to the war was Europe. However, as a direct result of the sanctions that have been applied against Russia by the European Union, that's no longer the situation. And its two biggest markets today are China and India. But the problem that Russia is experiencing is that because of the sanctions, and because of the pressure that the West is applying on China and India to limit its purchases from Russia, Russia is still having to offer discounts of around $20 per barrel to encourage both of those countries to take large volumes of oil. And the other major problem that Russia is experiencing is what to do with its natural gas. Prior to its invasion of Ukraine, Russia supplied huge quantities of natural gas via pipelines that it had built directly to European countries. However, the vast majority of those countries are no longer buying Russian gas. And if you follow the channel, you'll be perfectly aware of the controversy and the conspiracy theories around the underwater explosions that took place on the Nord Stream gas pipelines, which run under the Baltic Sea and provided gas directly to Germany. There's still an investigation going on at the moment to try to establish who was behind those explosions. The West is blaming Russia, saying that it self-sabotaged its own pipeline However, Russia has countered those accusations by blaming the West. Now, almost constantly since I started posting videos on what's happening to the Russian economy, I've received tons of messages from people saying that the sanctions aren't working, there's no impact on Russia, Russia is thriving, it's actually doing better now, it doesn't need the West, this is the best possible outcome for the Russian Federation. However, if we look at the figures, you can see that oil and gas revenues in the first six months of 2023 are down almost 50%. And as this is the biggest single source of income for the Russian economy, there is no doubt whatsoever that the sanctions are having a massive impact on Russia. There has been a huge reduction in income, a huge reduction in cash flow. And one of the biggest problems that Russia is now facing is that it needs to find markets for its oil production. Because when you have your facilities set up and established, you want to keep them running at maximum capacity. You want to keep drawing that oil out of the ground and letting it flow. Russia doesn't have sufficient facilities to be able to store huge quantities of oil. So therefore, it needs to sell that oil directly to its markets. And when you've got a reduction in your markets, such as Russia's experienced over the last 18 months, that's starting to cause them a problem. And so there is a possibility that if Russia has to stem the flow to reduce the amount of oil it's actually taking from the ground, that that could cause big problems for Russia going forward. And as we've discussed previously on the channel, Russia has lost access to a lot of technology because the West has pulled out and a lot of the oil and gas companies are no longer operating in Russia. And if they have production problems and they can't access the technology, that could be a real double whammy and cause even further further problems in the oil and gas industry for Russia. Non-oil and gas revenues are the revenue from all of Russia's other commodities. Russia has a vast array of different commodities that it sells all around the world. And the official results for the first six months of 2023 show that non-oil and gas revenue was 28.7 trillion rubles. And that compared to 27.2 trillion for the first half of 2022 and represents an increase of almost 1.5 trillion or around 5.4%. Now, as I said at the start of the video, the information that's being provided by Russia is limited at the moment. So we don't have a breakdown as to what this non-oil and gas revenue actually relates to. But I think it's interesting to look at the profile as to what's happened in 2023. In January, non-oil and gas revenue was 931 million rubles. In February, it increased to 2.2 billion. In March, it increased again to 4 billion. In April, it increased to 5.5 billion. In May, it increased to 7 billion, and in June, it increased to 9 billion. So that obviously represents a huge ramping up in non-oil and gas revenues. And if we look at the same six months for 2022 to establish whether or not this is a seasonal pattern, you can see that in January 2022, non-oil and gas revenue was 1.3 billion. In February, it increased to 2.4. In March, 4.2. In April, 5.2. In May, 6.4. And in June, 
And if we look at the second half of 2022, in July it increased again to 8.6, in August 9.8, in September 11.2, October 12.4, November 14.1, and December 16.2. So what the 2022 figures show us is that there's no seasonality, there's no marked spike and dip in terms of these figures, but rather what we have is a never-ending increase in non-oil and gas revenues. And there is no clear explanation as to what's going on here. But when you take a step back and look at the figures, there is a question as to whether or not Russia is balancing off the fall in oil and gas revenues with an unexplained increase in non-oil and gas revenues. Now, I genuinely have no idea what these non-oil and gas revenues relate to, but it could well be a bookkeeping entry to make sure that the impact of the fall in oil and gas revenues is not feeding through to total revenue. If we now have a look at the total revenue for Russia for the first half of 2023, which is obviously a combination of oil and gas revenues and non-oil and gas revenues, you can see that in the first half of the year, Russia recorded total revenue of 40.2 billion rubles. And that compares to 49.6 billion rubles in 2022 and represents a reduction of 9.4 billion rubles or around 19%. Now, obviously, a year on year reduction of 9.4 billion rubles or 19% is bad news. But when you take a step back and look at what happened to oil and gas revenues, where we saw a fall of almost 49%, a reduction of 19% in total revenue actually looks like quite a good outcome. Russia has done really well to limit its total fall in revenue. And as I mentioned in the previous section, I think the big question here is what is going on with non-oil and gas revenues? How has Russia managed to offset its massive fall in oil and gas revenues with income from other sources? Because when you think about the Russian economy and what it's producing, there are no obvious reasons as to why non-oil and gas revenues have performed so well. There isn't a major natural resource that Russia is selling where it's making a fortune and it isn't providing a wealth of services to countries around the world because most of the big economies have applied sanctions against Russia. So I think there is a really big question mark here as to how the non-oil and gas revenues have stayed so high and offset that huge fall in oil and gas revenues because you would have expected a 50% fall in oil and gas revenues to actually have a bigger impact on total revenues because historically oil and gas represented around 60% of the economy. So if you were applying those percentages, you would have expected the fall in total revenue to be more than 50%. The figures provided for expenditure are only given as a total. We don't get a breakdown to see exactly what Russia is spending its money on. But if we look at the figures for the month of June 2023, you can see that total expenditure was just under 15 billion rubles. And that compared to 12.5 billion for 2022, which represents an increase in the month of around 20%. And once again here, I think it's really interesting to look at the month on month profile. If we look at the expenditure for January 23, it was 3 billion rubles. In February, it increased to 5.5. In March, 7.8. In April, it jumped to 10.8. In May, it increased to 13.2. And in June, there was a further increase to 15 billion. So once again, I'm not entirely sure what's going on with expenditure, but there is a serious ramping up month on month as we've gone through the start of 2023. And this is broadly comparable to what happened in 2022. And if we look at the total figure for the first six months of 2023, you can see that Russia has spent around 55.4 billion rubles, which compares to 43.2 billion for the same period in 2022, which represents an increase of 12.1 billion rubles, or around 28%. Now, if we take a step back and have a think about what happened in 2022, Russia's invasion of Ukraine started on the 24th of February, and its single biggest expenditure every single month is investing into that war. So when we compare the two six-month periods, in 2022, Russia was only involved in the war for four out of the first six months of the year. However, in 2023, it's obviously been fully involved. So it's no surprise, really, that expenditure is higher in 2023 because the war is still going on and Russia is still investing heavily into it. If we now have a look at the bottom line figures for Russia, in June 2023, Russia recorded a net deficit of 2.6 billion rubles, and that compared to a profit for June 2022 
of 1.5 billion rubles, which represents a negative turnaround of 4.1 billion rubles. And if we now have a look at the total bottom line for the first six months of 2023, Russia's year-to-date deficit is now 15.2 billion rubles, which compares to a profit of 6.3 billion for the first six months of 2022. And that represents a negative turnaround from profit to deficit of 21.5 billion rubles. And these figures being released by the Russian Ministry of Finance are really interesting because the figures for 2022 show that Russia recorded a net profit of 6.3 billion rubles. However, as I'm sure you'll be aware if you follow the channel, the net deficit that was officially announced for the full year of 2022 was the equivalent of 48 billion US dollars. So the figures that we're seeing in this table are obviously not corresponding to the total net deficit that Russia posted for 2022. There was actually a negative swing factor compared to these figures of more than 50 billion US dollars. And obviously that is a major concern from Russia's point of view because the figures that they're posting for 2023 show that the economy has made a net loss of 15.2 billion rubles in the first half. However, if there are more losses that are not being shown in this table, then it's likely that the total deficit for the Russian economy could be significantly higher. And that's obviously going to start eating into Russia's reserves. Up until the point when the war started, Russia still had good trading relations with the majority of the world, including the USA. And as a result of this, it was keeping large amounts of foreign currency in banks all across the world in its own accounts. And this is what happens in the normal course of business when you're trading with lots of different countries. You keep accounts in each country in the local currency. And that means that when you need to make a purchase, you can just do a transfer in dollars in the USA or in yen in Japan or in pounds in the UK. And it just keeps things very simple because you can receive payments and make payments in the local currency without having to worry about exchange rates and the movement of capital and all those sort of things. So if we look at this table, you can see that the largest single disclosed asset at the time was the gold that Russia is holding within the country. And at that point, it was estimated to be worth $127 billion. Russia is a big fan of gold. It had been building up large reserves of gold. And for security reasons, all of that gold was held in the country. The second largest asset on this chart were the foreign exchange reserves that Russia had built up in China, which equated to around $81 billion. Over the last few years, Russia and China have been building their trading relations. And China represents a huge export market from Russia's perspective. And obviously, since the war started, the focus on China has increased even further. The next largest country on the list is France. And one of the reasons for this is because of the banking relationships. Prior to the invasion, Sokgen, the French bank, owned a large Russian bank. And therefore, there was a strong trading relationship on the finance side of things. And at the time that the war started, Russia had around $71 billion worth of assets in France. Japan is located relatively close to the eastern border of Russia. And the two countries actually share some oil and gas facilities on the island of Sakhalin. And at the point the invasion started, Russia had around $59 billion worth of assets in Japan. Germany was previously Russia's largest customer in terms of the purchase of natural gas and oil. And at the time of the invasion, Russia had around $56 billion worth of assets in Germany. Despite the fractious relationship between Russia and the USA, the USA is next on the chart with $39 billion worth of assets, followed by the UK at $26 billion, Austria, which also had strong banking relations and also was a big customer of Russian oil and gas, had around $18 billion, and Canada had around $16 billion worth of Russian assets. Now, in terms of the colour coding on this chart, this relates to the sanctions and the freezing of assets. The light grey section on the left hand side, which includes Russia and China, have no implications whatsoever. So there was no freezing of those assets. The red sections are all countries that have applied sanctions against Russia. And all of these countries seized the entire amount of Russian assets. So Russia lost access to all of these assets immediately following the invasion. And the darker grey sections in the middle of this chart represent all of the other countries. And there was a mixture in terms of the response from these countries. But it was estimated that following the invasion, Russia lost access to $350 billion worth of overseas assets. And all of those assets are still being held. They're still frozen. There have been some calls for them to be liquidated and for the money to be given to Ukraine to support the war effort. However, that actually hasn't happened because of the international laws against this. There isn't actually any law that allows any of the countries to legally 
take the assets, liquidate them and give them to somebody else. So until the war ends and we have some form of resolution, these assets will remain frozen and are still legally owned by Russia, albeit they can't access any of them. This chart shows the value of the National Wealth Fund in Russia dating back to 2008. Now, the National Wealth Fund is essentially the piggy bank of Russia. This is the cash that Russia is holding in reserve to cover its obligations in terms of its international debt and also to fund any shortfalls in terms of the national budget. And alongside the dates, the three columns that we've got here are the value of the fund in US dollars, the value of the fund in Russian rubles and the percentage that that fund relates to in terms of GDP. So what we can see here is that back in February 2008, the National Wealth Fund only had $32 billion in it, which equated to less than 2% of national GDP. So at that point, there was a very, very small amount in the National Wealth Fund. If you've been following the channel, you'll know that the losses that Russia incurred in the full year 2022 were actually more than the amount that Russia was holding back in 2008. So that basically wouldn't have covered them to be able to fund that deficit. If we now roll forward through the years, you can see by 2010, the fund was up to around $92 billion and then stayed at around about $90 billion until 2014. And of course, that was the year that Russia invaded Crimea and annexed that whole area. And a number of sanctions were applied against Russia and it lost some of its trading relationships. And between 2015 and 2019, we saw a reduction in the National Wealth Fund. And by 2019, it was down to $58 billion, which at that point represented around 3.7% of GDP. However, between January 2019 and November 2021, the National Wealth Fund actually increased significantly. And by the start of November 21, it was up to around $198 billion, which at that point represented around 12% of GDP. So this was a significant bolstering of the National Wealth Fund over that period. And of course, that raises the question as to why that was done. Was Russia planning for some form of event such as the invasion of Ukraine when it knew that it would rely upon things like the National Wealth Fund to be able to fund unexpected falls in income. Now, if we move forward to February 2022, which was just before the invasion started, the National Wealth Fund had come back down to around $175 billion, which represented around 10% of GDP. And then by the start of January 2023, it was down to $148 billion, or around 8% of GDP. Now, as I mentioned earlier in the video, Russia posted a net loss for 2022 of $48 billion. And in the first quarter of 2023, there was a further deficit of around $28 billion US dollars. Now, the figures that we've seen in today's video show that the losses are continuing month on month. Russia is hemorrhaging cash. And the problem that the Russian authorities have is that they're having to dig into their wealth fund to fund these losses. And at some point, the wealth fund will run out. Russia will run out of cash. And that's going to put them in a very serious situation. So what's the summary and conclusion today? Well, I wanted to post this video really to provide you with an up to the minute update as to what's happening in the Russian economy. Over the course of the last 18 months, there's been a lot of speculation as to the impact of the sanctions that have been applied against Russia. A lot of Russian supporters have said that there's actually no impact, that Russia has simply pivoted and is now selling more oil and gas to countries such as China and India, and that in the long term, this will be beneficial to Russia. However, what we're seeing from the figures that have been provided by official sources from the Bank of Russia and from the Ministry of Finance is that that isn't the situation. Russia is suffering badly as a direct result of the sanctions that have been applied against it. And the very latest data that's been provided by the Bank of Russia shows that Russia's current account is down almost 85% in the first seven months of 2023, compared with the same period for 2022. And 85% is a serious reduction in anybody's language. And this represents a fall of over $140 billion. And as we've talked about in today's video, this is on top of the $48 billion deficit that Russia posted for 2022 and the ongoing contraction in the revenue that Russia is earning from the sale of oil and gas. And the figures that we've been through in some detail in today's video show that the trend is that there is a continuing reduction. Month on month, Russia is earning less money and it's continuing to invest heavily into the war in Ukraine. 
Now, at the start of the conflict, there was a lot of discussion about the fact that Russia had built up some serious reserves. It had been planning in advance. It had lots of assets to be able to fund the war effort and any negative impact on its global trade. However, as we've seen in today's video, those reserves are finite. They won't last forever. And a lot of the Russian overseas assets have been seized and are no longer available to Russia. So over the course of the last 18 months or so, Russia has had to fund all of its deficits from its National Wealth Fund. But unfortunately, that National Wealth Fund is now dwindling. It's starting to run out. And if the Russian economy continues to operate at the same level it's at right now, they will run out at some point over the course of the next 12 months. So Russia is in serious difficulty here. It needs to do something about the current situation. Either it needs to stop the war in Ukraine and agree that it can start trading with all of the countries that are currently sanctioning the country, or it needs to reduce its expenditure on the war or increase its revenue from some other sources. But unfortunately, from Russia's point of view, it's going to be very difficult to do that because it's currently doing everything it can to increase the level of trade it's doing with countries like China and India. But unfortunately, from Russia's point of view, it's still having to offer discounts to encourage those countries to buy large volumes. So the overall summary of today's video is that the official figures that have been published by Russia show that Russia is in serious difficulty. In the first seven months of 2023, Russia has experienced an 85% crash in its current account. The current trends tell us that Russia's revenues are reducing month on month and the assets that it's living off, its National Wealth Fund and its other reserves are running out. And at the current rate of spending, Russia could run out of cash at some point over the next 6 to 12 months. So hopefully you found today's episode useful, informative and thought-provoking. If you've liked what I've said, then please give me a thumbs up. Thank you for watching this video all the way through to the end. And here's something to put a smile on your face.